What up, it's your girl Minna. In this video, we are trying out a new foundation. I'm excited because I have so many and I'm, I'm loving just trying new foundations out. This one's a new one. I have never even heard of this brand before, but we'll get into it. If you're not already subscribed here, make sure you also follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I post three times a week on YouTube, so definitely subscribe. You don't wanna miss those videos. So what I was gonna do was try out a, a Say foundation, Say. You know, I love their air set loose setting powder, which is not here. It's in my stash. Love that. But I had 9.5 and what I would like to try out is 10 because 9.5 has a red undertone. And I don't like red undertone foundations. I like neutral. So because of that, I don't have the say foundation or it's a tinted moisturizer, excuse me. What I do want to use is this glowy super gel and the shade is sun glow. I put it on my hand and it looked so good. Let me show you. I was like, okay, now this is a whole glowy situation, you know, great if you are what on vacation on the beach or just in general want to glow because you feel like it. Look at that. Just amazing. So what I'm going to do is put this on my face. I was just sitting here thinking I'm not going to prime because even the foundation I'm going to use, which is right here. I don't know how to pronounce this. So I'm not even going to do it, but it's a natural long wear silk foundation with hyaluronic acid and vitamin C. It also has SPF 20 in it. I do already have on SPF, so don't just expect your foundation to protect you from the sun's harmful rays. Put on your SPF beforehand, and then of course, it's always a benefit if your foundation has SPF in it as well. So because this is a luminous product, <laughs> and we're doing this glowy situation. I'm not going to do any other primer. So leftover on my hand, but then let me actually take some more. But let's look at this. Have you ever tried anything from either of these brands? I want to know. And specifically, have you tried this? And like I said, the color is sun glow. And let's put some just right on the face. Wowzers, this is going to be glowy. Of course, you could put this product on the back of your hand or on some kind of a tray and then mix it into your foundation. But I want to do it separately because I'm not even so sure that that color of the foundation is gonna match me so let's just do this separately i know we don't use glowy products so i'm i'm putting it on like i'm scared but that's because in some ways i am <laughs> oh man i'm just prepared to be glowy today even though i am not in the tropics i should be in the tropics glowing like this sticking to the middle of my face no need to glow on my hairline that's weird okay patting because i already have on skincare no need to be rubbing this in like it's cocoa butter because it's not okay all right this is looking pretty I wouldn't wear this by itself because it is golden, but you might want to do that. I don't know how this would perform on the body either because I always get concerned about transfer. But I think that this looks pretty. Comment and let me know what you think. Alrighty, so here's the It's Iconic Foundation. The color I have is 6N. Oh, let's see. Okay, it's got a push top. Let me put it on back in my hand because yeah, 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 yeah. This looks like it'll match me. Look at that shade. I just know by seeing it on my hand that it will work. But obviously, let's put it on the face and reconfirm, okay? Taking my flat Sigma Kabuki brush. Oh God, okay, I can make this work. It's N, it's 6N, it's light. I can make it work, but it's light. It actually looks more red than I would prefer. It doesn't look very neutral. Oh, okay, here we are. We are already here. I'm not gonna put on something different. Natural finish, it's weightless, medium buildable coverage with blurring properties. It's light, silky smooth, and gives you flawless results. Okay, so medium buildable coverage go over the brows because I, I like to change the brow shape when I do my full face of makeup and I'm patting because again you don't want to be disrupting too many things because we've got layers of product on the face at this point yeah so it's looking more red to me than neutral I don't understand again I don't, I'm not familiar with this product at all but, but 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 if you're new here this is what I do I make things work in the end it might not look the most fantastic I might not be the most confident in the foundation and the fun the finished look but it will look decent enough to go on with my day and like I said at this point we are going to have to do that regardless all right so we're going to cancel things out neutralize things as we go along and you'll see how that process builds up so the concealer I'm going to use to highlight is going to be this you already know in the bathroom my stash i have lola's one and done the color is mink this is a neutral shade which is great so it's going to neutralize this because this is not neutral to me like at all i love this full coverage concealer it feels whipped not whipped where it's porous anyway just understand what i mean it's whipped okay that's it <laughs> i don't want to confuse you any further this is an elf cosmetic sponge i dampened it or i washed it well actually I, I soaked it earlier and now it is almost dry, but it's still good enough to use. If you are not familiar with how to dampen your makeup sponge or you're not confident, 
that you're doing it correctly and you want to see what happens if your if your makeup sponge is soaked as opposed to damp then make sure you watch the video that i've done on that already you can always look at my video playlist you can always look at for instance the beginner makeup tutorials playlist or bold looks playlist and you're going to find that particular video and other great ones in that playlist as well so you see how mink melts into the skin love it it's light and if you can tell the difference between cool shades neutral and warm shades then you'll see that this is pretty neutral which is nice it just neutralizes things i do have a product that is cool that i like which is it's usually a, a powder i don't do cool undertoned foundations that'll make me look weird i like to highlight under the cheekbones the chin because hello it just makes everything look so bomb not taking too much product to do that because it really pops off when we contour and also we've talked about this several times where if i change the foundation and keep everything else static the whole face is going to look different so if you've watched several of my videos you know that i use this mink shade all the time and it's not even popping as much as it usually would meaning it's not showing as much as it usually would because this foundation foundation is a lighter shade than I normally wear now in the summertime. Confusing? Comment and let me know. What I'm saying is if you've watched several of my other videos lately, what I've been doing is wearing a foundation because it's summertime that is darker than my skin tone, but matches my neck and chest really well. And it just looks beautiful in the end because when I bring the whole look together, it just works. Because this foundation is not that dark, you can barely see my highlight. And that's just what happens when you change one product and keep everything else the same. Similar to that, I'm using the KVD Vegan Beauty 098 shade of the product. And when I do a foundation that is darker, like I said, that matches my neck and chest, but is darker for my face, my face does not match my neck and chest. This product doesn't stand out as much. It's not as dark. It looks great to me, but it doesn't look like, whoa. But because this foundation is not very dark, this contour looks like what? Wow. It just looks so dark and harsh. So I always like to point that out. I'm going to make it work. You already know, you know what I do around here, but oh, and if you're wondering, this is the It Cosmetics number 702 brush it always stands out and just makes things like wow so you might be switching certain products in your kit and thinking oh my god why does my face look so washed out today it's likely because the different shades just don't go together like they used to so watch my video on getting a summer foundation although summer is almost over but we're still in the thick of it watch that video and i'll make sure i update with the different seasons normally just fall and just winter and, and summer how you need to change your foundation and what that means for everything else in your kit it's going to change everything else in a sense if you don't pay attention you feel what i'm saying comment and let me know if that made sense to you honey because it made sense to me this is looking real dark real real ridiculous so. but i knew that this would happen all right so now i'm even worried about the nose contour because again it's going to be harsh taking my sephora 57 brush pinching it a little bit always love to connect my nose contour to the brow honey that's the makeup artist trick baby you want to get it to look good connected to the brow but of course if you're a beginner just stay away stay far away don't be going out looking like you've been run over by a tractor trailer just leave your face the way it is okay just do, just do a little bit don't do too much just do one little bit don't try to get all fancy with it and do artwork on your face like this is not first grade <laughs> hi i didn't use enough <laughs> i'm trying to go easy because i know it's gonna look dark because the foundation is like but now i can barely see it hi so what i like to do at this stage is take this part of this this particular sponge because the bottom is not rounded so this part which doesn't have much product on it and i go in this direction to blend out the harsh lines right here as you can see it's going to fade and we're going to keep this same placement of the sponge because we don't want to end up putting contour where the highlight is and vice versa so turning in this direction do you see that kept the sponge placement the same so that the area where the sponge is on the contour remains the same harsh lines should be blended looking a lot better move the fingers over the hands and keep it just the same so that the area that is on the contour and the area that is on the area of the sponge that's on the highlight remain the same you don't want to end up like i said transferring it so there's that Harsh lines have now been diffused. Nose is fine. We're going to do all that, okay? And now we're going to set the face. Okay, so depending on the actual shade of the product you're using, it could be setting, it could be further highlighting. 
okay? So because I'm going to be using the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder, I am setting. If I was going to use, for instance, the Huda Beauty setting powder in the color Cinnamon Bun, it is warm, so it would have further highlighted my face and also set it, okay? Because this is sheer, clear, whatever, then it is simply going to set. So whatever shade I have on my face, I'm going to just get that shade versus I wanna lighten this, I wanna brighten this, I wanna neutralize it, I wanna make it more warm, then I would choose a setting powder that is more warm or darker. Let's say my highlight was too dark, then you can go in with a powder that is a little bit dark so that you can tone it down. Do you understand? Let me know if that makes sense to you or if it doesn't, okay? Pinching the sponge, getting in here to make sure that the concealer hasn't settled into my crease. Also, if you've seen several of my videos is I will take the product that's on here, dab onto the back of my hand to get off excess, and then I go in. This way I'm not using so much of the setting powder. I just have had instances in the past, not in the near past, but in the past enough, where the freaking setting powder just, it got stuck on my face, okay? But what I do recognize is that when that's happening, what I mean is you'll see it caked up in one area and it doesn't come off. When that's happening, it's because the skin is dry. So I would have dry patches underneath my eyes. And then when I would do this and leave it caked on, without dabbing it beforehand, it would just be so scary because it was like, yo, I just have this caked patch of powder now on my face, what do I do? Well, honestly and truly, you just gotta make sure your skincare routine is A1. If you have dry skin under your eyes, you need to hydrate. And by hydrating it little by little, the skin will exfoliate, it, dead skin will just fall off. Ooh, that's a lot of powder. <laughs> that's a lot of powder. <laughs> As I talk to you, I'm just overdoing it. I can't. So there's that. But because I've been scarred in that way, and you know, when it's done, it's done. The face is on, you got this patch. You didn't realize you had a dry patch before you began doing makeup because you just didn't realize for whatever reason, right? And then it's pronounced when you set it with powder. I've I just been so scarred that I, I just do that trick to just tap off the excess just in case. I just don't want to be left out here looking crazy, okay? So I just dusted off the extra. This is looking very loud we are going to put on a face powder. Make sure you watch my video on face powder so you can understand what I mean by that and why I'm doing it, okay? Not everybody you watch is going to do that, but your girl going to do it and she been doing it. You feel me? This is the LYS. You've been here, right? No Limits Bronson LYS brush as well. This is definitely a contour on me. Definitely looks loud today because like I said, my foundation is not as dark as usual, but this is actually good because did I con- <gasps> Yo, see, whenever I do something different to my face and it's not comfortable for me, I just mess it up. I'm sitting here like, did I even cream contour? I forgot I wanted a cream contour and I was gonna use this one by Say. I was gonna do this and I forgot. Oh my God, this will be in a different video. So here we are using just powder today to contour. Oh, wow. This is very different. Wow. It's gonna still look good. So now the face powder, I'm gonna use this, this one by One Size Pack Your Star. You already know what it is, Dark 4G. This is golden. It's gonna add some goldenness to the face. I'm not gonna use a neutral powder because I don't feel like it. I love to use this golden one because it just looks so good. I'm focusing on the areas where the contour and the highlight meet to blend everything together. Oh my gosh, and I have been enjoying this rose ink cream highlighter. The shade is prismatic. It's giving me a subtle highlight. So I'm wiping off my sponge onto, I always have paper towels on in front of me and then taking some product. This is definitely beginner friendly. So that's why I'm able to dig into here like this. It is not very harsh. I mean, if you've never done this, don't just go digging, honey. Oh. Okay, so I did a lot today. Praise the Lord. Wow. Uh, I spoke too soon. I did a lot. Hang on. Let's get this. Let's get this under control right now. All right. <laughs> Blending on this side. I love this shade though. Prismatic. Definitely because my sponge has product on it, it builds up in here. And I feel like that is what happened. And that's why I have this clump here. But I'm going to fix it. See how it's got darkness to it? That'll happen to your powders as well. Do you have a powder product? And are you using those sponges that come with it and then are you using a colored powder not a translucent a colored powder throughout the day to 
blot your face. You see our parents will do that. They'll take the compact, take the little sponge, wipe in it and then blot their face, wipe in and blot their face. After a while, the oil builds up on the product and then it'll look dark in some spaces. Essentially, there's buildup on here and I just forgot that I need to be wiping off the first layer to get all that off. So that is what I believe happened over here and that's why this is clumpy and that's why I need to fix it. So just a note there with your powders if you're doing that. I feel like that whole taking a colored powder throughout the day and blotting off your oils is old school, but you might still be doing that and if you are, please don't get a translucent powder number one because why add more color more pigment to your face it could look cakey if you get a translucent powder that you are blotting off oil with then that is better or just blotting sheets so you're not going to add any more product to your face just use blotting sheets to get off the oil two different options for you let's see how we can get this to go down this part is clean okay it's looking a little bit better it's gonna all melt and come together i do believe so there's that you got you're getting a few tutorials in this video. You're getting a few different things. How do you feel? Comment and let me know. My nose highlight is looking very, very harsh, but here we are. I have been enjoying this LYS cream blush. It is really, really good. This is the shade Epic. I don't believe I've been telling y'all the shade. Oh my God. Higher standard satin matte cream blush. And this is the shade Epic. And see, this one does have product on it too because it's going on top of a face that has product on it. Hello. And I'm going to wipe that too. But this is a blush and wow, it's... <laughs> Very pigmented. You see, and here's the thing. When you clear it off, you're going to get mad pigment. This is a cream product. So in this case, I'm okay leaving the, the what contour that's on here, you know, but obviously if it's a powder, it's going to be a mess. So don't leave it on the powder. Okay. Wow. This is giving me pigment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wowzers. I overdid it here. My goodness. So to help tone this down a, a little bit, I'm going to go with this bronzer color, which is a contour on me, same one that I used around my face, same brush, and starting toward the hairline, just going to apply this to deepen slash blend slash tone this down. More toward the hairline, I do wanna keep the fringe toward the center. This is just more toward the hairline, and do it haphazardly if you, if you ever make this mistake, so that it doesn't look so like, orange, brown, just let it all blend, you know? And there's always leftover product on here, so now I'm just really putting it in. Now the problem is that this is a brush that I use only for that product, the contour, bronzer product, the powder version, I know. Confusing, I get it. But now it's gonna have remnants of orange on it, okay? And I don't know about you, but I don't wash my brushes after every session, and I know you don't. So I'm gonna just wipe it off like this, to be honest with you. I'm not about to wash this. <laughs> not today, another day. Not today. How's it look? My face just feels weird today, but we're gonna just make it work. Here we are with the finished look. I love this lip. I haven't worn it in so long. I'm gonna link all the products that I've used in the description box below, so make sure you look at that, okay? And also comment and let me know what you think about these curls, what you think about this makeup. I love this lip. I used to always wear bright lips and I just fell off. What is happening? I did a neutral eye today, neutral like brown smoky eye. <laughs> But you know, there's not a lot going on with it, but this lip is popping and I love it. Anyway, let me know what you think about this foundation. I was gonna do a wear test, but it's already 3.30. So how long am I going to wear this as a test? Watch one of two of the videos that I'm gonna leave at the end screen for you. And as always, I'm glad you're here and thanks for watching my video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.